course, and it was so life altering for my patients that I went, oh my gosh, what else is out there? Mm -hmm. And so the next thing I studied was I actually started with homeopathy and it just kind of blew my mind. And I was like, oh, I will, this is like a lifetime to learn that it's really intricate. Mm -hmm. um, so I studied acupuncture and then herbal therapy uh, and um, food therapy. And the differences that I saw in my patients were so phenomenal that I wrote a book talking about how I was doing things differently in my journey to get there. That was my first book from needles to natural. Mm -hmm. And um, I really wanted more people to know about the opportunities. And I wanted more pets to have the opportunity to heal themselves instead of being on this chronic treadmill of chronic inflammatory disease, obesity, early death, um, mm -hmm. allergies, infections, just it, it, it's somebody wrote a really good social media um, statement. Uh, I shared something about the state of the veterinary profession, which is just in a terrible state right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody who's a veterinary technician said, you know, uh, we are on a treadmill. The veterinarians are on a treadmill where we aren't healing anything. And so we're keeping our patients so sick with mm -hmm. bad food and chemicals and vaccines that we don't have time to constantly see these chronic diseases. The dogs that are there with their ear infection every single month, it clears up and it comes right back. Skin mm -hmm. infection clears up and it comes right back. And so yes, the veterinarians are overwhelmed, but if they would look at actually healing things and changing things from the foundation, which is get the diet right, yeah. uh, then we wouldn't need as many veterinary appointments. The veterinarians wouldn't be so overwhelmed and they wouldn't constantly be putting out fires. Instead, they'd be doing what I'm doing, which is now enjoying teaching people how mm -hmm. to make their animals thrive, not just survive, how to get rid of all that chronic disease. And my goal really, besides, I wanna change, I set a goal originally to change the lives of a million pets worldwide. And then I knew we surpassed that because I had a couple of posts that hit a million views. And I was like, okay, well, those million people must have at least a million pets. So good, did that. So I changed it to 10 million. Have we hit 10 million? I'm sure we have. Can I measure that? No, um, but it's still a fun goal. Uh, I don't know, maybe I need to change it to something else. I don't know what that would be because I can't even wrap my head around it. Um, but we are we are making an impact. We are seeing when we do surveys of what are you feeding your pet? So many more people are feeding raw food. So many more people are feeding fresh foods. So many more people are feeding home prepared foods. Um, and people are really trying to change their pet's overall well-being and health. And they're trying to solve issues instead of constantly putting out those fires. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal at this point is to empower pet parents, to teach pet parents, and then to find the best products and supplements and foods that are going to support them in that journey. And I love that. And I am so grateful that you are out there creating this huge difference. That's actually what drew me to stay in the pet industry. I ended up in the pet industry by accident. I <laughs> was actually working in the film industry, took a break, came back and started working in a pet store and saw the difference that food can make in these animals' lives. And wow. I was like, I'm in love. I have to stay. And so that it aligns so well with what we're doing at Steve's and my own personal goal as well. So I am so grateful that you are out there making a difference. Thank you for everything you're doing. Oh, no um, problem. <laughs> so can you tell me about your trusted products? What's important to you when you're picking things to recommend or stuff that you like? Well, this is, um, this is kind of an interesting process that we go through. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have no problem dropping a potato, uh, dropping a product like a hot potato if things go wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and that includes the management of the company, the people that work for the company, their communication skills, their integrity. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we are looking for products for our store, we are looking for things that are not synthetic. We are looking for natural whole foods, herbs, um, clean products, clean toys. Uh, we don't want shampoos or soaps or ear cleaners or uh, wound care to be something that is filled with chemicals. We, we want to look at 
a lot of plant-based things that are in our environment for a lot of that skin care, uh, wound care. Um, so many great things. And then we want to look at nutritional products that really align with what I want to feed my own animals, what I have seen work really well. And one of the, because I've gone to so many AFCO meetings and I've been kind of on that inside loop of what really goes on in the pet food industry, mm -hmm. um, I've become uh, pretty cynical about the pet food industry. Um, but I've really become a label reader and I've become aware. I was doing a consultation with somebody earlier today and she said, look, my neighbor, is, she lives in Florida and she says, my neighbor's a snowbird and just you know went back home. And she had this huge delivery of food from a company that mm. delivers direct to the home. And so she told me to go get it because she didn't want it to go to waste. And I said, okay, well, let's look at the ingredients. And all their ingredients read really well. Their website was really hard to navigate, really hard. Like they want you to put in all this information about your pet. And you know, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to give you all my information. I just want to see the, I want to read your ingredient list. Right. I finally, you know, after 10 minutes of wasting my time, on this website, I finally found the ingredient list. And so when they listed all the whole foods that were in there, I was like, oh, that is really nice. Mm -hmm. And then I finally found the entire ingredient list and I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. whoops, whole mm -hmm. bunch of synthetic vitamins and minerals in there. We've got that, that ubiquitous vitamin mineral mix that so many companies use right. that is usually sourced from overseas and has had a lot of problems with little things like excess vitamin D or, you know, not enough calcium or not enough this. So I went, ah, you know, if it were me, I, I wouldn't give that to my dogs. And she said, no problem. I'm donating it right now. And I said, you know, for the shelter dogs, that's going to be 10 times better than mm -hmm. what they were going to get. So that's great. But she's already feeding her dogs really high quality products that don't have any of those synthetics. And I'm like, eh, let's just stick with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yes. And that's one of the things that drew me to Steve's is the the no use of synthetics. Yes. You know, if you're if you're feeding whole real foods, you should be able to get your nutrients through those whole real foods. Why are you adding in all of these vitamins and minerals afterward? And you know, it's it's funny because one company that we do work with, they mm -hmm. have a bunch of different products and some mm -hmm. of their products are balanced with whole foods and some of them are balanced with vitamins and minerals added in. Mm -hmm. And, the, and there are different levels of synthetic vitamins, minerals, you know, some are better than others. Yeah. And I said to them, why are you, are you making this particular product that I like with the added vitamins and minerals when kind of the sister product doesn't have the added vitamins and minerals? And she said, we had to do that for the veterinarians because the veterinarians would not recommend our product because they didn't think it was complete and balanced because it didn't have all of that listed on there. Wow. And I thought that is really horrible that in order to convince veterinarians that something is complete and balanced, they have to see a bunch of chemicals put in there. I'm like, you know what? I, we need to do a better job educating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So again, I'm really glad you're out here helping to promote this education and that's something we're driving really hard toward as well. Yeah. Promoting you can you can feed your animal through whole foods. It doesn't have to be this complicated. You don't have to see 35 synthetic vitamins and minerals pre-blended overseas somewhere yeah. for it to be complete. Yeah. And it, it's it's really hard, like even formulating diets. Mm -hmm. Um we're we are held to it has to meet AFCO standards in this country, or it mm -hmm. has to meet FEDIAF standards in Europe. And it's like they want the bare minimum. Like when you, if you formulate to what they say, you're going to have protein deficiencies. You're, I mean, you're probably going to have way too much copper. Right. It's like, and they have very few maximums. There's only a few nutrients that actually have a maximum value. So most mm -hmm. of them have a minimum and it's kind of the bare minimum to keep animals alive. Right. Like, you know, 18% protein for an active dog. It's crazy that they need more than that. Even mm -hmm. our senior dogs need more than that. Our puppies definitely need more than that. And I think they're supposed to get like 21 or 22%. It's mm -hmm. like, no, they really need a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't like that you have to formulate to end. <laughs> it is impossible. Like if I go slaughter a cow mm -hmm. and get ground beef, and then I go to another farm and get another cow and get ground beef, if we did a nutrient analysis on those two packages of ground beef, 
they are going to be very different, very right. different because the animals are raised differently. They're fed differently. They might be a different breed. Uh, mm -hmm. They might've been slaughtered at a different age. The soil that they're on may have been depleted. So mm -hmm. when we, when we think it's like, Oh, I'm just going to use this computer system that is going to spit out something that tells me I formulated and met all those standards. Well, we don't right. know unless yeah. we test every single ingredient every single time. We don't mm -hmm. know. So yeah. it's it's kind of all a big farce. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right. what feed real whole foods in the dog's body or the cat's body is going to say, I need this much vitamin D. I'm going to take that out of the food. I mm -hmm. need this much vitamin B. I'm going to take that out of the food. Oh, there was a little extra in there. Let me just pee that out. Right. The body knows what to do with whole food. When you throw synthetics at it, it's like, uh, Where do I put this? I'm going to store some in the liver. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. What on earth is going to have it? an allergic reaction to that because it's a foreign invader. Right. Yeah. This is weird. I don't know what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Nope. So, so why did you bring in the protein bites? Oh my gosh. So we were talking before we went live, uh, when we were at global this year, global pet expo, we go every year, my daughter and I split up, uh, the, the trade shows. She likes Vegas a lot better than I do. I do not like it at all. So I've been to super zoo once that was one time too many. Um, and mostly because it's in Vegas, not because of the show itself. Uh, but I like going to Florida and I like going to global. So we've gone pretty much every year since we started the company and we are always there looking for new and unique products. Mm -hmm. new companies that we weren't working with or that we weren't aware of or that are brand new. Um, and so I, it's really funny. We, ha we have a whole team of us and we wear our bright green shirts. So we're pretty easy to find. Um, and I literally will go down those aisles so fast. And if I see something that's even intriguing, the first thing I do is I grab the package, mm -hmm. we'll grab the package and I flip it over and I look at the ingredients. Yep. And I mean, I can't tell you how many shampoos and wound care things and, you know, cleaning it. It's like I read it and I go eh, and, you know, right back on the shelf. And I do the same thing with foods, because when I see, um, again, the synthetics or I, you know, it's got any rendered products. It's like, you know, it's going right back on the shelf. I don't even want to like I'm not, you know, and you, you, literally people are chasing you down the aisle wanting to talk to us. And it's like. Yeah. Nope. 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 Gotta go. Yep. <laughs> so, but I picked this up and I went, Oh my gosh, this is a functional treat. I love functional treats. Like I don't give my dogs that many treats. And if I'm going to give them treats, I want to give them something that's actually going to be beneficial for them. Wouldn't that be nice? Like give them something that's going to work their teeth and gums or give them something that might help with their gut health or might help with what, when we bring in a lot of rescue dogs, a lot of times they have allergies and other kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. So I picked this up and I'm like, Oh, organic, 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 organic. Wow. And they have Gussie's gut in them, which is just like this phenomenal fermented product. So it's like a, huge great source of probiotics and then it has all these great prebiotics in here with the fiber sources like the collard greens and the cauliflower but then you also put herbs in here that mm. are so good for gut health so there we go thank you so yeah. slippery elm bark if you have an animal with a little bit of gi upset slippery elm is so great organic peppermint is cooling to the digestive system but the lamb and the chicken is warming and the digestive system really likes that, that like it's in TCBM or Chinese veterinary medicine, it likes things that are warming to the middle, hmm. warming to the gut. So you've got things in there that are so good for that. So lamb and chicken were actually really good protein choices. Hmm. Um, but then we are balancing that out with things like the slippery on bark, which is a good yin tonic and organic peppermint, which is, so I, love to drink peppermint tea because it is so good for our digestion. Um, and then the other tea that I like to drink is ginger. So the peppermint is kind of cooling for the system. And then the ginger is warming for the stomach and it's kind of drying because our digestive system doesn't like things to get really, really too, too damp and too wet. Right. So it just had this amazing array of ingredients that I was just like, this is so cool. And you call them gut boosting bites and they totally, totally are. So, and there's a lot of companies that are coming out with what we call functional treats or functional toppers. 
Right. So they might have a lot of antioxidants in them, or they might have, um, you know, something for gut health, or they might have something for inflammation. Mm -hmm. And looking at something that is really from a TCBM perspective, you guys nailed this one. Um, it is this is amazing. So, and it's something that your pet's going to like. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so easy. So a lot of times we're sprinkling probiotics in the food and they're like, mm, I smell that I am not going for it. Right, uh, right. And the great thing is dogs and cats can eat this mm -hmm. and cats are really weird. I would, I would think that cats would go for things that they would normally eat in the wild. Like they're going to go for poultry or they're going to go for rabbit. Mm -hmm. Then we get crazy cats. Like my cat's favorite protein is pork. I'm like you couldn't go out and kill a pig. Like right? it's not going to happen. That is not in your nature, but it, it but it is their favorite protein. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of them really like the lamb and then the, the chicken, most of them will like, and it's nice. We do have probably more pets with chicken, not, not true allergies, but intolerances. So it's nice that we have the lamb, which it tends to be less of a problem for most animals. So you've got choices. Mm -hmm. um, so for people who follow me and do TCVM stuff and you go, oh my gosh, this is, this is a hot protein. I've got a really hot dog or a hot cat, which is less common. Uh, don't worry about it because this isn't something that it's their whole meal. It's mm -hmm. a little treat. And it's pretty well balanced because we've got other things in here that are going to be cooling. Um, and so, and I love the the raw honey that's in there because that is so good for allergies as well. And we all know that allergy problems start in the gut. So mm -hmm. this is a great way to be repairing the gut, boosting the gut health. Um, and then while we're working on getting everything else straightened out, uh, leaky gut and, you know, skin and coat problems and all that. But one of the, one of the biggest problems that I see is we're not, we're not feeding that microbiome correctly. Mm -hmm. we, we are so intent on bathing them with all kinds of shampoos and soaps and detergents and scrubbing all the crusts and scabs off their skin. It's like, right. all right, well, we just ruined that microbiome, mm -hmm. you know, and then we, they get antibiotics for their skin infections and their allergies and they get steroids. Well, that just wiped out the gut microbiome. And then we wonder why, why do we have diarrhea? Why do we have acid reflux? Why, why do we have even more allergies? Yep. Um, so yeah, I love these. I, like, I saw them. And the funny thing is we didn't carry much in the way of freeze dried food at all. And when I was at Global, I picked up this, these little bags and I went, oh, these are really awesome. And so of course it's in the same booth with Steve's Real Food. And so I started picking up the bags of Steve's real food and realizing that one, you had a ton of different protein choices mm -hmm. and reading the ingredients. And I was like, what, why are we not carrying this? Like if people are going to shop with us, wouldn't it be better to be a one-stop shop so they don't have to go to 10 different websites to order it? Because sometimes right. like, why are people ordering from us when they could go directly to a website where they might be having a sale or something? Well, the thing mm -hmm. is, if you have to <laughs> place 10 different orders, <laughs> so it's like, you know, we should really make this easier for people. And people really like to get an opinion mm -hmm. on the quality of products. Yes. And so because we do our research and because I am that really picky, obnoxious person who makes the salespeople really crazy <laughs> when I'm talking to them about their products, um, you know, pe people appreciate that we have done a lot of the legwork and the homework. So, yeah, absolutely. I love when I, to that question. <laughs> it, that was fantastic. And you covered like eight of my questions. <laughs> so that was absolutely beautiful. Um, but no, I, I, I totally agree. When I can learn about a product, when I can learn about what's going on behind the scenes, when I can learn more about it and I, there's somebody I trust recommending it, I'm so much more likely to give it a try, to bring it into my life and see if it works for me and my lifestyle and in this case for my pets. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important for people to, um, you know, most of your veterinarians are not going to recommend this kind of food because they don't know anything about it. Like they're, again, they're going to pick it up and go, well, where's the vitamins and minerals? Um, so we need to educate them. Uh, but your independent pet stores, those independent retailers that they are a lot like me, they spend a lot of time researching the products that they're bringing in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
a lot of them are purists and they are really looking for that top level of products. Now, if you walk in there and you see the top level, but then you see some things that you're kind of like, mm, I don't know about that. Just remember that there are all different levels of shoppers. Mm -hmm. So I used to go into uh, our little independent pet store in the next town over where I lived in New Jersey. And so I would go in there looking for things occasionally or just checking to see what was new on their shelves. And they had some really low quality foods as well. And I said, why you guys, you guys are so all about, you know, the high level and educating people. And they're like, cause some people are just not going to go there no matter what we do. So don't count them out. If you see things in there that you're like, Oh man, I would never feed that. Just walk by and say, man, I would never feed that. And then go to the good stuff. Uh, yeah. But, you know, ask them questions, ask them what they have new, ask them why they choose certain brands, you know, at their upper level. If you, if that's where you want to be shopping and you're looking for that purity of ingredients, talk to them. Most of them, especially the store owners, they're going to be really well versed. Uh, mm -hmm. but most of them spend a lot of time training their team as well. And usually their teams are very small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of them are very passionate. I was actually a, um, I ran a small store in Ann Arbor, uh, Michigan for, um, I don't know, for years and years. That's what I was doing before I moved over to Steve's. And we were the exact same where we did have some lower quality brands. We did have some things, some foods that were chock full of synthetics and stuff. Um, but some of those customers, it took me six months. It took me a year to develop that relationship, develop that trust with them to be able to have that real conversation about food. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would start trying to have it the minute I met them and, and uh, okay. <laughs> and then a year down the road, they know my name, they know my dog, all of that. And now we can have a conversation. Now they, I've recommended some treats and they saw a difference and now I can recommend a food change and they'll see a difference there too. Yep. So yeah. And so people ask me, you know, the, the, they'll say, oh, I was on social media and I saw people recommending all these foods that I would never recommend. And so I was recommending that, you know, this level or feeding raw or whatever. And, you know, I get yelled at and people are telling me I'm crazy and I'm going to kill my family for feeding raw. And my answer to that is just, you know, kind of walk away. Don't get into an argument because if they have their mindset, you're not going to change it. However, if you keep talking and just keep chipping away and chipping away and chipping away, mm -hmm. there's going to come a point where they go, hmm, maybe. So when when somebody says, no, I don't want to talk about that, just put yet at the end of that sentence. Absolutely. You're planting a seed. Yet. You're planting a seed. Some plants grow really fast. Other plants take a while. <laughs> a really long time. The ground. <laughs> yeah, you don't even know there. Some trees take like a year or two to break the soil even. So it's going to take some time. Just keep working at it. You know you're doing something for good. You know you're making a positive difference. So just keep you know, smiling. One of my slowest conversions was my mother. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had been feeding raw food to my dogs for years. Uh huh. And she had just been feeding kibble. And it was a decent kibble if there is such a thing well this was going back 20 years um and she heard me lecture i mm -hmm. was lecturing at some local event and she said i'm gonna i'm gonna come listen and by the end of the lecture she was like oh my gosh i have to change my dog's food i'm like I've been talking about this for how long? <laughs> I had the exact same experience. Yeah. My mom used to, uh, you know, I used to talk to her a little bit about dog food here and there. Uh, okay. And then she watched one of my webinars and she's like, oh, I definitely want to give that a try. It's like, we've been talking about this for a while now. <laughs> so yeah, just put yet at the end. And my mother's dog hated it, would not eat the raw. Really? So she calls me up and, or, or I went to her house. I don't even remember. And she said, so those raw patties that you brought me to feed her. She absolutely will not touch them. So she put them on the grill. Really? <laughs> grill them like a hamburger. <laughs> and I was like, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> right. Maybe the first day or two to start, but let's ease. Let's, let's move over to raw. Let's, let's like, get it there. Okay, yeah. Not grilling. Like we'll yeah. find another way around this, but not grilling. And her dog, right. um, we oh gosh, I think I finally got her to eat true raw. Mm -hmm. when she hit like 16 and a half wow. um, <laughs> before that we were just had to gently cook everything for her and that she would eat really high quality food as long as mm -hmm. it was gently cooked and then finally when my parents moved in with us and we had 10 dogs in the house her dog was like i think i'm gonna eat this stuff raw <laughs> <laughs> right I can't eat it it's gonna be try. Here. <laughs> yeah that's so funny <laughs> so uh for the protein bites who do, is there anyone in 
particular who you think would benefit from these. I, I personally like them for every dog just because they're such a microbiome booster, just because they, they do have that, that honey in them to help, uh, help educate the body about allergies. But is there anyone who saw these and you were like, wow, this would be great for this group of dogs? So anybody who's pet is struggling with acid reflux, chronic loose stools, mucousy stools, mm. um, chronic allergies. If, if you know that they can tolerate chicken or lamb, um, and if, if you have a pet that you're not really sure, uh, chicken is hidden in so many foods, particularly if you've been feeding um, grocery store brands or big box store brands. Chicken is hidden in there a lot. And interestingly, when we look at the DNA of what is actually in food, it usually doesn't match what it says on the label. So th there's chicken and just about, cause it's a cheap protein. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think that if, I, frankly, my dogs are all healthy mm -hmm. and I use these just as a functional treat. It's like, listen, if I give you this, you're healthy. I'm going to keep your gut healthy. Here, have something that I know is really good for you. It's all organic. It's well sourced. There's nothing synthetic in here. There's nothing you're going to react to. Yay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. But I've got one dog with allergies. So it's like, okay, well, we're working on, he's a fairly new to us. So it's like, we're working on your microbiome. We're working on getting things changed back around. We're getting rid of the skin infections and the ear infections and all of the wonderful things that they come with. Um, Cocker Spaniels, they come with all that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's just a great, it, it's just a little boost. You know, we start with a really high quality diet. So we're starting with things that are organic and well sourced. And then when we're giving, like he loves his treats, he makes be crazy looking for his treats. So I'm like, well, then you're going to get something healthy. So right. I, I mean, I think that any animal could benefit from them. And I would say don't count out your kitty cats because uh, mm -hmm. kitty cats are, are very, very picky with their treats. Um, I have a cabinet full of different treats and I'll pull out something for the dogs and the cats will all come running to and I put some out for the cats and half the time they eat them and half the time they go, not today. <laughs> right. <laughs> nope. Not today. Right. Absolutely. I, I think that perfectly sums up cats too, because they can be, I'm, I'm actually working on writing a uh, cat webinar. We're going to be presenting in a couple of weeks. And um, that's one of my favorite memories of cats is just how they would be like, Oh, this is delicious, but tomorrow it's gross. I'm not touching it. And they hate leftovers. So people right. ask oh, me, yeah. why don't I write recipe books for cats? I'm like, well, they're not going to eat leftovers. You're going to have to cook minute amounts. Just enough right. for today. He's got to serve it warm. Don't dare put yeah. it in the fridge and then try to serve it again. It is not going to happen. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so you have a new book out, right? I do. Raising naturally healthy pets. Do you want raising to naturally healthy pets, helping your pets live a guide to helping your pets live longer. Um, and my goal is that all dogs should live to at least 20 mm -hmm. and that cats should live to 30. And, uh, we've been doing all of our dogs are rescues. So they come to us with all kinds of issues. And yet we've still had quite a few that have lived to 18 and 19, even though they're coming to us with, just a boatload of problems. Wow. Um, I think the more that I can do to, so the, the longest chapter in the book is on vaccines because it talks about what they are, what you would use them for, what dog or cat, because it's dogs and cats would mm -hmm. need them. And when uh, my household, there's very few vaccines that get into this household. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I talk about spay neuter. Keep, should we keep them intact? Should we spay them? When should we spay them? What are different options? Should we do ovary sparing space? Should we leave some parts? Should we take out all the parts? Um, talks about how to find a holistic veterinarian. And if you can't find a holistic veterinarian, how to work with your traditional veterinarian without being like this all the time, uh, because that can be really challenging, particularly if you don't have, if you have one practice and that's your only option, you better figure out how to work with that doctor because when you need them, you need them and you want them to be your best friend so that when you call, like, I don't have a license right now. I have to take my animals to the veterinarian and I made great friends with my veterinarian. And when I call and say, oh, one of my animals is having an issue, come right over. Mm -hmm. That's the relationship that you want. Um, so it talks about all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's uh, for a new pet owner 
or somebody who's new to kind of moving into the holistic realm. But mm -hmm. even for people who have been in this realm for a long time, I've had people say, oh my gosh, this is the best like guide because it has the list of toxic plants and it has the list of toxic foods and um, a natural first aid. So things that anybody could could use really. Yeah, it, I love it. it. It's I've been a food nerd for um, well for a long time for humans, but for animals for the past ten or twelve years, and this helped fill in a bunch of blanks that I had in my own you know knowledge ca catalog. I, I look at it as as it as an instruction manual for dogs and cats. Like this is your yeah. owner's manual right here, start to finish. It's got everything you need. So <laughs> I've really really been digging this, and I I actually loved the chapter on vaccines because right. it's hard to research. It's hard yeah. to research and get really good information and keep track of everything and try to figure out a schedule and having it all right here. It's just amazing. So Thank you. thanks for writing this. Um, if <laughs> you guys haven't checked it out yet, go get it guys. Um, it's, it's a really good book. Um, so where can people learn more? Where, uh, check out all of your favorite stuff and learn more from you because you have so much wisdom to share. Where oh my we God. Well, our website is just a wealth of information. Um, that's drjudymorgan.com. We also now own naturallyhealthypets.com. So they both take you to the same website. Um, we also have Dr. Judy U where we have courses for people. There's one called Dog Longevity. There's Cat Longevity, Horse Longevity, which was written by a dear friend of mine, Dr. Joyce Harmon, amazing equine, holistic veterinarian. Uh, we have a lot of other veterinarians who have made courses, uh, how to feed raw bones, um, allergy courses, like, you name it. We're, we're, it's just building all the time. So that's on drjudyu.com. You can also get to it through our website. And then we are on pretty much most of the social media platforms. I would say our biggest ones are Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do a lot of live interviews. We do focus weeks. Um, we did a focus week on kidney health. We did a focus week on heart health, talking about the different diseases, how they're treated, both holistically and naturally. We just did eye health. We're gonna, we have a gut health coming up, an allergy one coming up. Um, so just, we're always, we're always looking for how we can educate people. Um, so, and there's just tons of resources on the, on the uh, website. Right. Oh, I love it. And it, when it comes to medical care, especially when it comes to food, um, a lot of dogs and cats are still kind of living in the dark ages right now. And so I really love that you're promoting so much education because education is how you get out of that. Yes. Uh, once exactly. you know better, you do better. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And I, you know, I, I went through the guilt for, for people who are like, I feel so guilty that I didn't know all that, but, but you didn't know. Right. And it's like me, when I learned chiropractic, then I had to go through the guilt of all those dogs that I put to sleep that had back problems, that had mobility issues. I could have fixed that. I didn't know. Well, I can't go back and fix it. And right. I didn't know. But once you know, it's like, well, okay, here we go. Now we're, now we're on a different track. And right. I am learning every single day because mm -hmm. I'm always researching things and people ask me questions that I don't know the answer to. And then I have to go do more research. Uh, my daughter, Gwen, who is the COO of naturally healthy pets. Um, she's an engineer. And so she's a bit of a research nerd. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times she will go down rabbit holes and then she starts sending me all this stuff. And I'm like, how did we even get on this? <laughs> <laughs> right. we're, focusing, <laughs> we're focusing way too much on the minute. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to do the same thing. I'd get off work at the pet store and I'd come home and I'd read for five or six hours online, you know, just doing all sorts of research and stuff. And I'd bring some of that back into the store and have to step myself back. Brad, you are getting way too focused on this one <laughs> tiny little thing. You have to look at the bigger picture, man. You know? It can get really crazy. I, 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 sometimes I do educational things that are not my wheelhouse. So I was mm. asked to do a presentation on air quality in the home. Hmm. as it pertains to our pets. Wasn't something I had really done a lot of research on. And so they asked me to do this for a summit and do a, pre a one hour present or a half hour presentation. Mm -hmm. I got so into going down that rabbit hole and researching all the different ways that things affect our pets and how to detox them from all these things and how to protect them from all these. 
literally I started at like 10 o'clock in the morning and at midnight I looked up and went, oh my gosh, I've ignored everyone all day. <laughs> <laughs> but I am now the air quality expert. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I love that because that's a, an educational opportunity for you. And now you have something else in your wheelhouse, something exactly. that you were not good at before. And now you are. Exactly. So sometimes yeah. when I get really weird requests, I'm like, oh, do I want to do that? Yeah, I might want right. something. Do I want that to become part of my repertoire? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, uh, because mold was one of the things that was talked about with the air quality, is mm -hmm. I had to make a mold detox protocol. Hmm. And that was kind of my freebie for the summit. Like, you can get this mold detox protocol. Well, the summit hasn't gone live yet. It got postponed. So we haven't posted the mold detox. Well, now people keep asking me for the mold detox. So I have to email the person on my team who made the write-up and say, could you send this to this person? <laughs> So sooner or later, we're going to have to make it available because now we're starting to get requests for it. <laughs> yeah, you can't just wait forever until the summit gets released. Uh, that just sounds like some really amazing information needs to be out there. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to thank all of you guys so much for joining us today. Um, I did promise that we'd give away a couple bags of protein bites. So how about we do that now? Because that's fun. StreamYard has this very... Um, this very excellent giveaway tool that I'm going to take advantage of right here. And let's pick a couple people to take home some protein bites for their dogs and cats. Um, I've had this post up for a little bit now. Comment for a chance to win a bag of protein bites. So we're going to pick from everyone who has commented. And after this drawing, we're going to, we'll reach out to you on the Steve side and uh, follow up to get your name and address. Jen, congratulations. And those are some beautiful dogs. Very cute. Thank you so much. Definitely yeah. a boxer, maybe two boxers. Yeah, it looks like two boxers to me, maybe one older and one younger. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, congratulations. How about we pick one more? They make that draw again button just way too easy to hit. That's I get cool. in trouble sometimes. It's, this is fun. I, keep, I recognize keep a lot of names. It's very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Sandy, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad we were able to get you guys some protein bites. Um, we'll reach out to you after the program, either later today or tomorrow, and uh, get your name and address, or get your address, rather. All right, I'm going to pull this back down. Very cool. Okay, well, I want to thank you, Dr. Judy, so much for joining us. And again, thank you for everything that you're doing out there. Um, it means the world to me, and I know it means the world to so many other people, but more importantly, it means the world to our dogs and cats who are slowly getting a better and better and better quality of life. Thanks to you and the other folks out there making such a difference. So it, thank you. It, so it much. takes a team and uh, you know, we appreciate all of the, the, the companies like yours, the holistic veterinarians that, you know, we really are stepping up and trying to educate more people. And, and I think we are, we are making inroads. We, we, we see it, by how the other side is responding. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you see it in the, the independent pet stores and stuff too. You know, years ago in the store I was running, we didn't even have a freezer. Right. Now the four foot freezer is beating out 20 foot sets of this dry brand or that dry brand, you know, out of this one little freezer. So it is, um, th there is an amazing revolution happening out there. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who joined us today. Really appreciate you guys being here. And um, hope to see you not too long down the road. I think I actually dropped in the comments, we're going to be doing a webinar called Raw Food Safety coming up at the end of June. Um, that's a really fun one. We'll be addressing um, a lot of the fears and misconceptions out there and just the questions that people have. If you're worried about bacteria, parasites, if you're worried about mycotoxins or nutrient imbalance, um, or if you just have other questions, Go ahead, click that link to register and join us. Um, we'll be doing a nice Q&A there as well. And then my favorite part, you get to see our food. You get to follow our ingredients from farm to bowl. You get to see our whole process. So that's a lot of fun for me. I used to waste a lot of time watching how it's made. And so <laughs> getting to see this process and see all the safety steps and all the consideration that goes into it, um, very cool to me. Yep. Um, but thank you all so much. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Judy. And um, Thanks for the invite. <laughs> anytime. And we will see everyone next time.